Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the benefits of the newly opened SLEX Elevated Extension Project. Our road safety reminder in the Young Street Smart Sports and centers on the proper use of headlights while driving at night. This week's Buying to Pep shall be about the limit on the number of passengers in PUVs. The public service segment centers on the use of beep cards at the Edsa Busway. Showcase this week shall have the luxury compact SUV crossover from Mini, the Countryman Cooper S. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management as well as developments in the automotive industry are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Strata athlete, confident to the core. Now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. There is a new man at the helm of the MMDA, but not one who is new to the agency. The resignation of Benner Abalos left a vacuum at the top office of the MMDA, which plays a vital role in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. President Rodrigo Duterte did not go far in choosing a new MMDA chairman appointing lawyer Romando Artes. Also a certified public accountant, Artes has been with the agency for five years now. After serving as the MMDA's Assistant General Manager for Finance and Administration in 2017 and later on as General Manager in November 2021. After being sworn into his new role as MMDA chairman, Artes vowed to work for the completion of projects and programs needed and pursuant to the agency's mandates. Traffic, solid waste and flood management, urban renewal, public safety, as well as the COVID-19 vaccination and the transition to the new normal. Along with Artes' promotion, MMD Undersecretary Frisco San Juan Jr. has been appointed General Manager, concurrent to his present capacity as MMD Deputy Chairman. The appointment and promotion of insiders to top positions of the MMDA ensures that meaningful and successful programs benefiting the public are continued. The Metro Manila subway project continues to move forward, or to be more accurate at this point, moving downward. The tunneling phase of the Metro Manila subway project, or MMSP, should begin soon. The first of many tunnel boring machines, or TBFs, will be lowered soon for a test run at the Valenzuela Depot. This was revealed by Transportation Secretary Artugade following an inspection of construction work at the MMSP's Valenzuela Depot and at Tandangsora and North Etza stations. The test run of the TBMs may commence as soon as May of this year, he said. The Valenzuela to North Avenue segment of the Metro subway is targeted to be completed in two and a half years, Secretary Togade added. The MMSP will be the first underground mass transit system in the Philippines, which will be at par with the rest of the world. Funded by the Japanese government, the subway is a 33-kilometer rail line that will stretch from Valenzuela City to the Naia Terminal 3 in Pasay City. The subway should help realize the Department of Transportation's plan to modernize the mass transport system of Metro Manila and the rest of the country. 
With the MRT-3 rehabilitation and upgrade complete, attention turns towards increasing capacity. The MRT-3 has successfully run a four-car train on its main line in dynamic testing to assess its safety, ride comfort, and stability against derailment. The MRT-3 plans to boost running capacity by using four-car trains following the recent completion of the rehabilitation and upgrade works conducted by maintenance provider Sumitomo MHITSP. The MRT-3 station platforms are designed to accommodate four-car train operations. However, there is a need to redesign the track at the north side of the MRT-3 mainline to allow for a safe operation of four-car train sets. According to MRT-3 Director for Operations Michael Capati, four-car train sets will increase the line's capacity and provide the riding public with safe and reliable transport as the country navigates into the new normal. An increase in the MRT-3's carrying capacity should be welcome news, as the demand for a more efficient mass transport system also increases with Metro Manila recovering from the effects of the pandemic. Those are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. It took more than two years for the South Luzon Expressway Elevated Extension Project to be completed, made harder by the pandemic, but is now helping ease traffic congestion at the Alabang Viaduct. Motoring Forum discusses how this happened. For many years, the Alabang Viaduct was a major choke point at the SLEX, causing kilometers long traffic congestion both on the northbound and southbound lanes. When San Miguel Corporation or SMC took over the management and operations of the SLEX, a solution was proposed to solve this perennial problem. This was the SLEX Elevated Extension Project that entailed constructing an elevated 19-kilometer expressway that would effectively connect the SLEX from Susana Heights and Montinlupa to the Skyway in Sukat Paranaque, bypassing the Alabang Viaduct. The project seen as a long-term solution to ease traffic congestion at the Alabang Viaduct was supposed to have been completed in December 2020. However, the COVID-19 pandemic and the consequent quarantine restrictions caused work to slow down. Work on the project also necessarily meant motorists suffered worsening congestion on the Alamang Viaduct in contiguous areas, and parts of the SLEX and even the Skyway system. SMC, however, utilized all resources available to accelerate construction, prioritizing finishing and opening the northbound lane of the SLEX elevated extension last April before shifting focus on completing the southbound lanes. In December 2021, the 4 kilometer 2 lane southbound alignment of the project was soft open to the public, effectively connecting the Skyway to the SLEX. At the same time, direct access to both the Alabang area and the Alabang Zapote Road was also improved. Motorists who go home every day to Muntinlupa, Las Piñas, Cavite, Laguna, and Batangas immediately felt the benefits of the project. In February, the fully completed SLEX elevation extension was formally inaugurated with President Rodrigo Duterte as a special guest. During the inauguration, SMC President and Chief Executive Officer Ramon Ang said that both the southbound and northbound sections of the SLEX elevated extension are now fully operational, making travel to and from the south easier and faster than ever. The completion of the project also provides seamless connectivity between SLEX, the Skyway system, and the NLEX. This will lead to faster, more efficient travel, transport of goods, and improved trade throughout cities and provinces, said Ang. All these will play a significant part in the country's economic recovery from the effects of the pandemic being concluded. San Miguel Corporation has to be commended for all that they have done during the early months and yes, all throughout the pandemic. Many of its accomplishments, including the SLEX Elevated Extension Project, were achieved in these very difficult times. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Mitsubishi 
Yuji Strata athlete, confident to the core. You are back with us here on Motoring Today. And in line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are on a main road, make sure na ang headlights na iyong sasakyan ay naka-low beam sa tuwing meron kang makakasulubong na sasakyan. Your high beams can distract another driver. Kaya mas maganda kung iyong headlights ay naka-low beam upang malinaw na magkakitaan at hindi maaksidente. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Paeng Choper this week. Paeng Choper lang kaibigan. Ako si Aliano Luico. Isang kapwanyo Choper. Huwag nang ipilit magsakay ng pasayero kung hindi nakasya. Ang bawat pampasadang sasakyan ay mayroong tinatawag na passenger limit o bilang ng mga pasahero na magkakasya. Kapag puno na, iwasang magtawag pa ng ilan at ipagsiksikan. Tandaan din na bawal maglagay ng ekstra bangko sa gitna ng pampasadang sasakyan. Palaging isipin na mahalaga rin na komportable ang ating mga pasahero. Ito po si Alejandro Loico, payong chopper lang. Kaibigan, mula sa inyong kapwa niyo, chopper. Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition. So you too can race yours. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. Philippines' very own Inigo Anton started off his campaign in Season 8 of the E-Racing GP Global Edition by winning one of two races held in the Season Opener Round 1. The other race run in the virtual Sepang circuit was run by sim racing expert R. Muhammad Alif of Singapore, who is favored to win the fourth Global Edition Championship in the event. 17-year-old Inigo set the fastest laps in both Round 1 races in the Gold Division. Inigo and Alif were members of the team that finished fourth at the biggest e-racing competition in the world, the Le Mans 24 Hours Virtual Race held last January. Both now share the lead at 42 points with three more rounds left in the series. Other class winners in the e-racing GP Global Edition Season 8 were Malaysia-based Nico Sage for silver, Malaysian Mohamed Tikiri in bronze, and Singapore-based Keith Mock copper. Another campaigner in the series from the Philippines is Axel Nocom, who is fifth in gold class standings with 16 following the first round. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Mitsubishi Montero Sport. Mastery in motion. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors.
Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Ford has rolled out the next generation Everest in a global reveal that showcased where it is going with its mid-size SUV. And where that is, says Ford, is an SUV for people who like adventure, recreation, and being able to go out with family and friends. Also heeding what customers are asking for, the next-gen Everest was designed, engineered, and built to be tough on the outside, a sanctuary on the inside with amazing capability underneath. The next-generation Everest looks the tough part with a wider track and longer wheelbase. The Everest interior looks premium, but what Ford wanted to emphasize during the launch was that it would be a quiet place in which driver and passengers, especially families and friends, can easily talk with each other and enjoy the journey together. Also emphasized during the global launch was that the next-generation Ford Everest comes with driver assist technologies and safety systems designed to help owners and their families explore with confidence. Ford presented three grades of the next-gen Everest, Sport, Titanium Plus, and a new flagship grade Platinum. The new Everest will be made available in various engines that include the new 3-liter turbo diesel V6, the single turbo, and the bi-turbo 2.0 inline 4-cylinder diesels and a 2.3-liter EcoBoost petrol engine. Now it takes getting jab and swab for motoring journalists to be able to enjoy the experience of finding out how the latest vehicles in the market ride and drive. And most of the time, it's all worth the trouble. Just like the media test drive event organized by Honda Cars Philippines for the 11th generation all-new Honda Civic. In the Philippines, uh, this is the first time to launch the model with uh, standard features Honda Sensing. We want to expand this feature and of course we will continue to develop the Honda Sensing so that we can contribute to the Philippine countries to reduce the uh, traffic accident. Six units of the latest Civic variants were made available for the test drive that took the roads heading up to the Tagaytay and the Sugbu area in Batangas, the S Turbo CVT, V Turbo CVT, RS Turbo CVT. In this media test drive, we traversed no, from uh, BGC to Calax to Batangas and then to Tagaytay. No. Uh, we choose this route in order for our media friends to experience no, how comfortable, how safe this, this car is. Okay. The itinerary provided the road conditions that showcase the smooth power of the 1.5-liter four-cylinder DOHC VTEC Turbo made it to a continuously variable transmission found in all Civic variants, as well as the ride comfort and sweet handling of the Honda's compact sedan. There was also ample situations that highlighted driver assist functions of Honda Sensing, also found in all the variants. And a good part of the ride and drive experience was all about the comfort and convenience features as well as smart connectivity in the new Civic. Highlighted by the 9-inch touchscreen display in the RS variant that comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and 12-speaker Bose sound system. I would like to invite all the viewers out there, you know, visit any of our 37 dealership in order to inquire about the all-new Honda Civic and all its uh, Honda Sensing feature. And if you are, uh, there are hesitation to actually visit the dealership, we have the Honda website, the hondapill.com, and you could visit them. And there are a lot of information about all new Honda Civic and the Honda Sensing. Mitsubishi dealers have begun accepting reservations for the new expander which Mitsubishi Motor Philippines Corporation or MMPC says is arriving in May. This early MMPC is enticing buyers to reserve units for the new expander by revealing a few details. These include a refreshed exterior highlighted by a new signature T-shaped head and tail lights, redesigned horizontal front bumper and 17-inch wheels and side sills. MMPC said the new expander interior will have a more robust SUV styling with adoption of Mitsubishi's design identity of horizontal axis in the dashboard, soft padding accents, and 7-inch display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Utility and drivability have also been enhanced, enabling a flatter and more comfortable ride due to the addition of high-performance valves in the front and rear suspension, while still keeping its best-in-class ground clearance of 225mm. The new Xpander will have five color options, including new blade silver metallic, and will have a starting price of 1,030,000 pesos. Toyota has rolled out the all-new Avanza that expects to sweep the competition in the value-for-money 7-seater MPV segment. The Avanza is a perfect vehicle for families. Considering its capacity, it can fit 7 people inside with enough room for luggage. And I guess mobility needs during this time is very important. And because of that, this is a perfect size vehicle. You can put a lot of people 
You can put a lot of your stuff for traveling, and it's very fuel efficient, very practical car. The third generation Avanza arrived with what Toyota described as a sleek and active design with split type LED headlamps as well as 16 inch alloy wheels for the G variant. Toyota is positioning the all new Avanza as the affordable and practical 7 seat MPV of choice, a retailing price at 813,000 pesos. Toyota Motor Philippines President Atsuhiro Okamoto is upbeat about bringing in the all-new Avanza saying, We love giving our customers choices. That is why we are reintroducing our reliable, tried and tested model in the compact FPV segment. I am sure this full model change of this well-loved family car will bring more happiness for all. I'd like to invite everyone uh, watching to uh, visit any of our Toyota dealerships nationwide. Check out the all-new Avanza and it's a really a great car and you'll surely love it. Our car of the week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Mini Asia and British United Automobiles Incorporated have finally made available locally the new Mini Countryman. This edition of Showcase takes a look at the Mini Countryman Cooper S. The Mini has carved a niche all on its own with an iconic design which has never strayed far from the first Mark I Mini rolled out back in 1959. To this day, there's no mistaking a Mini from any angle seen on the road. This is certainly true with the Mini Countryman Cooper S, even though at around 4,297mm long, 1,822mm wide, and 1,557mm tall. This is by far the largest of the Minis. The five-passenger, five-door Countryman was rolled out to carve a niche of its own in the now popular SUV crossover segment. Arriving as an SAV or sport activity vehicle, it can be both at home in the city, the countryside, or even off-road trails. While staying true to its mini heritage, mainly in its proportions and overall look, the new Countryman follows a new distinct robust go-anywhere styling. The new black radiator grille is particularly distinctive with the red S for the Countryman Cooper S. Also distinctive are the asymmetrically rounded LED headlamps outlined by a continuous band of light that serve both as a daylight running light and turns indicators. The Mini Countryman also comes standard with front and rear LED fog lamps, with light band on the upper semicircle serving as the park lights. Serving to remind about the rich British heritage of the Mini Countryman are the upright rear chrome framed LED lights with the Union Jack motive. The roof and side mirrors of the Mini get the piano black treatment. Also getting the black gloss finish are the headlight surrounds, rear light, radiator grill, side turn indicators, and door handles. The Countryman Cooper S also comes with standard 19-inch turn style spoke two-tone light alloy wheel strap by Run Flat Tires. In all four trim, the Countryman Cooper S also features chrome-plated tailpipes and roof rails. Their appointments have also been upgraded and updated in the new Mini Countryman Cooper S. Quite distinctive is the 8.8-inch color touchscreen display for what Mini calls the Connective Navigation Plus located in the circular panel in the center of the dashboard, featuring high-gloss piano black surfaces. The system comes with wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless charger from mobile phones, and a second USB socket. The 5-inch digital instrument display is found behind the steering wheel in a round black panel. The Mini Countryman now comes standard with front and rear park distance control as well as park assist. The Minis have also been characterized by having surprisingly roomy interior space for passenger and luggage. The Mini Countryman continues this tradition and comes standard with electrically adjustable seats for driver and front seat passenger, with driver also benefiting from memory function. There's room for three adults in the second row seats which can split and folded 40-20-40 to enlarge the rear storage space from 450 liters to 1390 liters. It comes in 12 ambient lighting colors that should suit various moods. The Countryman Cooper S is powered by a 1998cc gasoline engine with a mini twin power turbo technology generating 192 horsepower from 5000 to 5500 rpm and maximum torque of 280 Nm from 1350 to 4600 rpm. The engine is made into a 7 speed Steptronic double clutch sport transmission. 
Meany says that Countryman Cooper S can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in an impressive 7.5 seconds and attain a top speed of around 226 kilometers per hour. As with all minis, the suspension settings of the Countryman Cooper S have been tweaked to ensure firm road holding without compromising on comfort. The driver can also, at the touch of the button, switch from mid, green, and sport driving modes, changing steering and accelerator settings depending on mood or road conditions. All in all, the Mini Countryman Cooper S is a fun, practical, and stylish vehicle for daily driving and weekend getaways. The Countryman is the most popular Mini model representing a third of global Mini sales. It should find a good niche for itself in the local premium compact SUV crossover market. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program, 100% worry-free driving. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. segment that dwells on the wide array of motoring problems, not only in the metro, but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us, or we ourselves see and hope to fully find solutions for. Our public service segment is next. Digitalization is proved to be useful, especially in this COVID-19 times. In public transportation, Authorities have long been adopted the use of non-contact payment options such as beep cards. We have been reporting the EDSA busway even before it became operational, including new developments as well as controversies that surround the exclusive bus lane even up to this point. In one of our Facebook posts, Van Garcia expressed his observation on the implementation of beep cards. According to him, this mode of digitized payment has become optional when the free ride under the service contracting program has ended. He added that beep card terminals are either broken or shut down. Another follower, Floyd Drama, agreed and said that bus conductors or companies seem to not like the idea of beep cards. Camille Miskin, on the other hand, said that busway is okay for private drivers but not for bus operators and commuters. Now that we are in the new normal, it is only fitting for services to be more convenient, safe, and comfortable for its consumers, including public transportation. We hope to hear from concerned transport officials on what they intend to do or improve on the EDSA busway system. That's our public service segment this week. 
And should you yourself encounter motoring problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 35th year of continuing service to the general local motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.